Now turn left to take the California 91 West Ramp. Hey, it's Scott Kubo. People ask me how often I use autopilot, and well, I use it every day, every time I drive. So I want to show you uh, how autopilot is currently working for my daily commute. Um, now, it doesn't uh, recognize uh, stoplights yet, so we have to do this part manually. Uh, when the little steering wheel, gray steering wheel and display comes on, then we can engage autopilot. Two taps down on the drive stock, and you hear the chime, and it defaults speed to the speed limit of the highway, which is too fast. Uh, there's a lot of slow traffic here and I want to slow it down so I'm using the scroll wheel to uh, reduce the max speed. Now it wants to uh, change lanes to the left and it's turning on the turn signal but there really isn't a lot of gaps here so I push up on the uh, turn signal to kind of delay that uh, but then we'll let it go. Uh, slight tug on the steering wheel uh, and it will uh, change lanes um, on its own. does that very sharply and confidently. I like that. Then it wants to change lanes again. It's signaling and it's going to get in behind this uh, Honda Civic and slow down at the same time uh, quite nicely actually. I'm going to push sideways on the steering wheel button to decrease the follow distance uh, so there's not as much of a gap. I like to make it as short as possible. Uh, you hear the chime. Autopilot wants to change lanes and it does so again very nicely and turns off the turn indicator on its own. Now there's a lot of cars coming up fast on the left side and uh, when the navigate on autopilot uh, feature first came out it would definitely hesitate or abort the lane change because of getting afraid of all these cars coming up but uh, in recent versions uh, over time it's just gotten more and more confident and it doesn't bother it. We'll click on the speed limit uh, sign and increase our speed to the uh, highway speed limit and there's a lot of cars on the left and there really isn't a gap so autopilot wants to go over to left but it'll wait until there's a decent sized gap now you can see there's a vehicle in our blind spot on the autopilot display and also in the rear view camera uh, when autopilot gets ready to change lanes it's going to turn on the turn signal and uh, you'll hear the chime as well and it will ask for to make sure your hands are on the steering wheel here we go um, you can see that there's a car in our blind spot and that's indicated in red and it won't uh, start uh, maneuvering until you give a slight tug to the steering wheel. Now it's going to slow down and get in behind this uh, Civic and there's a big gap behind the Civic it will fit into but it generally will not accelerate to get into a gap it will only decelerate and that's just the way it is right now so we got a nice white model x here on the left and uh, autopilot seeing that there's an opening will change lanes here we go uh, right in behind it now this far left lane is the uh, hov lane or the high occupancy vehicle lane and I'll show you in the uh, navigation settings we have use HOV lanes enabled and so that's why Autopilot want to get all, wanted to get all the way to the left uh, to get into the uh, HOV lane. So whew, uh, we made it through all that uh, traffic and lane changes and I'll be honest uh, sometimes it's just a little bit more work to uh, monitor Autopilot through all those lane changes and it might be easier to do it myself but I can tell you that uh, over uh, the updates uh, it's been getting much much more confident and uh, much more natural in the way that it uh, makes these uh, lane changes but uh, sometimes uh, and often when there's really heavy traffic and there just isn't a gap that it's trying to uh, get into and in making those lane changes it'll just slow down and kind of stop there and try to wait to get in behind a car and that's unnatural because people behind me will uh, will get upset so to avoid that in those situations I generally turn autopilot oh there was a lane splitting motorcycle um, I did make a, a video about that a uh, long time ago um, but uh, yeah autopilot uh, doesn't really move over for um, uh, lane splitting motorcycles or give you any type of warning that's something that I think it probably could uh, they could do uh, which would be quite nice so as I was saying uh, if there's really heavy traffic and there's no gaps that autopilot can get into then generally I'll um, uh, cancel autopilot and do it manually or cancel the lane changes uh, until there's actually uh, a, a big enough gap for autopilot to make its way into so we're going to stay in the HOV lane and in California if you apply for and get the uh, clean air decal stickers uh, you can uh, drive in the HOV lane um, 
without multiple occupants. Now there's the famous autopilot nag and there's a visual warning and it just wants you to uh, apply slight torque to the steering wheel um, so that it knows you're still there. I tend to keep my um, hands down here at the bottom of the wheel because it's a little more comfortable. Uh, the nags occur every, I don't know, uh, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute. It really varies and depends on the driving conditions. If, uh, if you're going slow and stop and go traffic and everything is fine, uh, the nags won't come very often. Um, if you're going a lot faster or there's a lot of turns or a lot of cars cutting in front of you, uh, it'll occur more frequently. So it's quite dynamic. Um, some people complain about it, but honestly, I think it's a really good feature and uh, you just kind of get used to keeping your hands on the wheel and applying slight torque every, uh, every so often. And we can also, uh, here's a nag again, turn off the nag by using the steering wheel buttons. Um, just pushing on the button will make the nag go away. So it really just wants to know that your hands are on the steering wheel and that you're paying attention. So Autopilot is really good at keeping in a lane and following the vehicle ahead of us. Uh, we can scroll up or down on the uh, right steering wheel button to increase or decrease speed. And then pushing sideways on that button to increase or decrease the fall distance all the way to one here. And that's the closest distance and it's not car lanes, it's actual seconds of time. So you can see that Autopilot speeds up very gradually, very naturally to get closer to uh, the lead vehicle and it's going about a second behind it and then I like to move it down to four like I just did uh, that's the midpoint setting and that will put about two seconds of time between you and the car ahead of you um, and I feel that's kind of how I like it the best when I'm tra traveling at these cruising speeds and so the adaptive cruise control is very very natural very smooth it lets that distance build up and then you can increase the follow distance all the way to, I think, seven. Yeah, seven here is the maximum. And that puts about three seconds of uh, time between you and the vehicle ahead. You can see it just opens up that distance very, very smoothly. So we're cruising along. We've got good weather, clean lane lines, not a huge amount of traffic. This is where Autopilot really shines. Um, it really does well, and you can just let it do its work. Um, you still want to keep your eyes on the road, but I find this really relaxing because I don't have to worry so much about adjusting speed and staying within the, li the lines. Uh, the car takes care of that, and I'm more aware of not where I want the car to go, but the cars that are around me, the traffic, uh, the blind spots, uh, these sort of things. And the funny thing is I actually find myself um, going a lot slower or just going at the speed limit or a little just above the speed limit because uh, when you're driving uh, manually I guess as human beings we just naturally don't want to be right behind somebody we always want to go faster than everyone else and fill those gaps and uh, with autopilot on um, you don't have to worry about any of that it kind of takes the aggression out of driving you can just relax and let it uh, adjust speed and uh, and distance uh, and it's it's quite relaxing actually so yeah, works really great and, and love it. Okay, uh, let's speed things up a little bit here. Okay, so it uh, looks like uh, traffic's slowing down here. Autopilot's gonna detect that. You know, the adaptive cruise control will slowly bring us, uh, decelerate uh, as, uh, as these vehicles ahead of us are slowing down. And uh, what would a commute be without, uh, without a little bit of traffic? Um, but this is what Autopilot is really made for. Uh, you can turn it off and you can uh, have a nice winding road. You can drive yourself and that's great. Uh, but if you get stuck in, uh, as Elon Musk calls it, uh, soul-destroying traffic, um, then you can let Autopilot do the work. And um, I think Auto, uh, Elon Musk actually... Okay, wait, here... Uh, we're gonna come to a stop I think it's Southern California what would Southern California be without coming to a stop on the highway so uh, this is stop and go autopilot comes to a stop uh, on its own no intervention and when this car starts to move uh, again no intervention no touching the pedal autopilot will start speeding up again and it will stop and go and it does re-accelerate a little gradually 
Um, it does leave a bit of a gap, but uh, I think that, that, you know, it's been that way for quite some time and that might be for safety reasons. Um, as you can see too, these uh, high occupancy vehicle lanes, uh, when there's a decent amount of traffic, um, you're not going any faster than the regular lane, so it really doesn't matter uh, in Southern California during rush hour. Uh, but yeah, Elon Musk actually, I think it was on an uh, investor earnings call uh, a little while back. Uh, he said he actually stopped using Waze uh, in heavy traffic because Waze will, you know, reroute you off of the highway and onto s uh, streets and make you do all these turns. And he said uh, it's a lot easier and more relaxing to just take the longer route or, uh, and, and stay on the highway in traffic, but just let autopilot um, uh, do all the work. And I can totally attest to that, you know, when I first got the Tesla, I really wish there was a way to have Waze integrated into its, um, into the Tesla navigation. Uh, but to be honest, um, you know, like Elon said, Waze will reroute re you through a lot of these unusual routes. And um, for most of the time in just regular highway traffic, um, I don't use Waze at all. I just uh, let the Tesla uh, do its thing. And if it is a slightly... Uh, longer uh, route uh, in heavier traffic that's okay uh, because autopilot uh, takes the boredom out of it and speaking of stop and go in a, in a sense uh, there's phantom braking uh, that's where the car will sort of unexpectedly uh, decelerate temporarily uh, for some unknown reason and uh, this is something that a lot of Tesla owners uh, talk about and some people obviously hate and it seems to be sometimes for because of shadows on the ground or when you're going over and over under an overpass or there's a large sign above you uh, I guess the radar signals or the the camera gets confused um, but you know I've noticed at least in this version which is 2019.32 I've had very very little phantom braking um, and uh, different people might have different experiences uh, but going under an overpass like this in the shadows um, has not been a problem at all with this version. Now, when you are going kind of on a curve and there's uh, slower traffic in your adjacent lane, uh, still get some uh, phantom braking in that situation. I guess it's just really hard for the radar to know are these slow cars in uh, your adjacent lane uh, in, in, in that lane or in your lane and sometimes it can get confused and it will temporarily slow down very quickly because it thinks there's a slow car right in front of you and other than that particular situation which to be honest is a, is a problem for all radar based adaptive cruise controls not just uh, Tesla um, other than that situation I haven't really had any really phantom braking on this particular version um, so sometimes it'll get uh, better and then as they try to implement a new uh, software version or a way of dealing with things it'll get a little worse it's a very two steps forward one step back process uh, with all these over-the-air updates at Tesla some people like that um, you know I'm okay with it just because that is the way that complex systems get better it's a very iterative, uh, I iterative process I will say that uh, for me at least where I drive uh, the lane maps or the lane identification uh, in the last uh, couple or few updates has not been as good as it used to be. Um, sometimes it'll it'll think it's in the right lane, in the correct lane for uh, uh, to take an interchange or an exit, and it won't be, and so it'll miss that exit unless I, of course, uh, take over. Uh, maybe Tesla is, you know, kind of updating the underlying source that they use for their lane mapping. Or I know Elon Musk has talked a lot about wanting to get away from predefined maps and maybe use more of a visual dead reckoning or use the, the you know, using the vision system to know uh, what lanes there are and what lanes it should be in. And uh, I don't know if that's what's going on, but if, it, if that is what they're trying to do, uh, at least for me, where I drive, it certainly uh, doesn't quite work as good as the old way, which was probably using, you know, predefined uh, uh, lane maps to help the car know which lane it needs to be in to take said exit. But again, it is kind of uh, two steps forward, one step back sometimes, and I'll, I'll be waiting to see if, uh, if and when uh, that improves, it gets uh, much better. 
uh, not only than it is now back to normal but also better than it previously was uh, many uh, versions ago. Okay, traffic slowing down and it looks like uh, this guy's gonna cut in in front of us and yep, you can see the cut-in detector which I made a video, uh, the last video was about uh, detecting that vehicle before it actually cuts into our lane and autopilot slowing down in advance of that keeps a nice gap between um, the car ahead of it and uh, before all of this uh, many uh, versions ago you know autopilot wouldn't detect that uh, vehicle cutting in until it was you know very much into the lane and by that time it was, it'd be kind of late and kind of have to slow down quite uh, abruptly uh, at these speeds, the early cut-in detector works uh, quite, quite, quite well. I really wish, as I said in my last video, um, that, that it would work better at higher speeds. It really doesn't quite work at, at higher speeds. And at those speeds, you really need to really protect the trajectory of a car that's coming into your path a lot further in advance. So uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see some improvements on that. Uh, in the upcoming version 10 uh, software and that should be going out uh, in wide release in the next couple weeks or at least uh, this week to the early access folks uh, of course it is Elon time so we'll see for sure so as a reminder this is a Tesla Model 3 uh, we've got the full self-driving package uh, add-on so that includes navigate on autopilot where it will follow its navigation and it's about to take an exit here we've got to move over so there's the indicator uh, navigate on autopilot automatic lane change over to the right uh, we need to get a little further over oh, this is my bad editing uh, trying to make the screen a little brighter uh, we need to change lanes over a little more to the uh, right to uh, take our exit so not a lot of traffic, so this is really smooth. Uh, my uh, Model 3 has hardware version 2.5. I don't think the software is yet able to make use of hardware version 3.0. Um, so we wanna slow down. It's gonna slow down to get behind this vehicle. And it's gonna, whoa, it kind of uh, aborted that lane change. Uh, that was a little weird. Sometimes you have these bugs seem to hesitate and abort that lane change I'm not sure why maybe it wasn't clearly able to see the lines in the adjacent lane uh, maybe that car was in the way I'm not sure uh, but it, it completes that lane change when things clear up you can see there's a lot of markings on the road that might confuse autopilot and shadows but it does just fine with all of these discolorations takes that uh, fork on its own uh, no intervention on my part uh, that works really well um, and we're coming up to a merging situation. The traffic here is generally a lot slower, so I'm gonna slow this down here. We'll go with, uh, around 55 miles an hour. That's generally the speed of this traffic. Uh, again, Autopilot doesn't adjust its speed so much to the adjacent lanes, but uh, I like to manually do that. Uh, we need to move over here because the exit's coming up. Uh, Autopilot doing that automatic lane change, monitoring the blind spots. Not a lot of traffic here. Um, so pretty easy for autopilot to do. Sometimes it is really heavy and, and treacherous in this area. Okay, so it gets itself into the exit lane. And there we go. Um, exiting, autopilot uh, navigation ending. Uh, and you hear the chime. We're now off of the highway. And we're in regular autopilot. Uh, it's not following the GPS. But we'll come to a stop here. It's decelerating on its own. And it won't come to a complete stop. Sometimes it does, but in a lot of situations it doesn't because it doesn't recognize stoplights yet. So I will stop myself. So there you go, on-ramp to off-ramp, no disengagements. This was version 2019.32, and V10 is coming up uh, soon. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed it, and if you're looking to purchase a Tesla and you found this helpful, uh, click on the link and find out how to get yourself free supercharging. I've enjoyed having you along, and see you in the next video.